Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and this is the Miraco 3D Scanner from RevoPoint, and it has a lot of really cool features that other 3D scanners just don't have. Let's take a look. So along with the features that have become pretty much standard for RevoPoint now, such as the Wi-Fi 6 for really smooth transfers, the fantastic colour capture, a 9-axis rotational sensor which makes it really easy for tracking your scans, and the high level of precision that you want from a 3D scanner, this scanner's also got some really great party pieces, the most important of which, it is actually two scanners in one. Claiming to be equally good at scanning large objects like vehicles, or smaller objects such as this bolt. So I'm pretty excited to try out both of these scanning sizes and see if they're up to scratch. But let's get the basics out of the way first. Inside the box, we get all the standard things that you might expect, plus a few extras. We've got our bag. Now this is different to the normal RevoPoint case. It's much more compact, but probably gonna be much more useful for the 3D scanner and carrying it around. We'll have a look at what's in that in a second. We've got a calibration board, which in case we need to recalibrate for any reason, I've never had to recalibrate one of my scanners from RevoPoint, but potentially there's a chance you might need to. And then we've got a range of different things, for example, our instructions and different dots that we can use to enhance scanning if we've got something without very many features or we've got some material that we can put down and use that if we're scanning something without many features, for example, a ball or something round. Then in this laser cut foam, which is gonna keep everything really well protected in transit, we've got the standard RevoPoint head that you can practice scanning on. You've got your charging cable and then pug, and then you've got the scanner itself. The scanner comes nicely wrapped, and we can see here that it's got a really interesting shape to it. We've got a huge number of lenses, which is what allows it to scan at a lot of different ranges and distances. You've got a play button on the top, a power button on the side, and then on the back, importantly, we get this massive screen. So you're not trapped using your phone or a computer as you normally would be with other 3D scanners. Now, importantly, there's no real problem with using your phone other than the fact that you're trying to store all of those files on your phone, which really quickly eats up a lot of memory. So having this with its own screen is massively beneficial. The screen will also rotate round, so you can try and scan yourself if you want to. We'll have a look at how well that works in a second. The only issue with this, I would say, is I wish it did have the ability to rotate around in this axis, that way, if you were scanning something at an odd angle, for example, holding it like this, you would be able to rotate that screen so you could see it. Minor gripe there, but something that just to bear in mind. We also have these really nice ergonomic handles. It's really, really comfortable to hold, which is gonna be good for scanning if you're doing this for a long period of time, which you can do because this has a massive battery. Then for the bag, we've got these nice magnetic clasps as well as a zip, so I think you're probably pretty safe if this is gonna get rained on. You've got an extra zippable pocket at the front, and then inside you've got the standard things you might want. We've got a turntable, I've got a English plug, which I'll need. You get a leather handcuff, which is an interesting choice. And then you've got your standard couple of extra cables, and importantly, your tripod if you're wanting to scan something statically. And this is actually a really nice tripod. It's probably the best one I've seen from RevoPoint. Not that their tripods are normally bad, but it's got a really wide base and it's got this very nice ball joint, which secures really nicely. And it's got a little cutout at the side. So you can put this totally sideways should for some reason you want this totally sideways. I'm not sure why you would, but the ability to rotate this round is really, really nice as it means that you can scan from whatever angle you want to if you've got something on a flat surface. The leather handcuff is a really nice addition from RevoPoint. It quite easily screws into the bottom of the 3D scanner, and that means that as you're wielding this around, and let's be honest, you're probably likely to be carrying this around a lot and moving it around, which means if you drop it accidentally as you're using the screen, you're not gonna be damaging your nice new 3D scanner. The screen itself is a 2K 6 inch AMOLED display. It's really bright and easy to see. You don't get any points where I've noticed any fingerprints on it and that's through using it for about two or three days. The other thing I wanna mention is the battery life on this thing is great considering the amount of work it's doing. RevoPoint claims you can scan for two hours without charging, which I can find really believable. One afternoon I was using this a lot not just for scanning, but also for processing, which you can do inside the scanner. And I didn't have to charge it once over the space of maybe six hours. So pretty impressive stuff. 
Let's have a look at how well it scans. I thought we'd start with scanning a smaller piece. This is something I've scanned for other 3D scanner reviews. It's a Titan head from Games Workshop. It's got a lot of different technical details on it. And we're using the near setting. And this is the button you can use on screen to switch between modes, which effectively is what scanning lens I'm guessing you're using to do the scan. Processing the scan on the scanner is really easy. You just pick which method you want. It gives you the time it's gonna take approximately. And then it will go through the process of either fusing, meshing, and then texturing. Or you can click the one tap edit where the scanner tries to pick the settings it thinks best for your project. And you can see this is really easy to do on this touch screen. And it's very easy to view your scan and decide if you want to take additional scanning shots of this to add more detail as you go through. And you can always come back and edit them after the fact if you change your mind. So it pretty much perfectly mirrors the on-computer version of this. Now I've been using the 16GB version of the Miraco. There is a 32GB version of this, which is the Miraco Pro. Regardless of what you do, it comes with 256GB of memory, which is more than enough for what should be a lot of files. For those that are interested, I just thought I'd bring this into Blender so we can see the quality of the scan. And I've got this paired against the Revo Point Mini 2, which from what I found is pretty much as good as you're going to get for a home scanner. Now, we can see some slight differences here. I'd be interested if you could guess which one is which without me telling you. But just to make it really clear, the one on the right is from the Miraco, the one on the left is from the Mini 2. And we can see the Mini 2 does get slightly more definition around the really fine points like these rivets. And if we have a look at these vents here, the Miraco has done a very, very good job, but there is a slightly bit more detail and depth that you get on the Mini 2. Now, the reason for this is that the Mini 2 uses blue light for scanning, as opposed to the Miraco, which uses an infrared sensor, which means some of the edges might not be quite as crisp on the Miraco, but as you can see, there is almost nothing to it. I will say the infrared scanner, from what I've played around with, does seem to leave a little bit fewer artifacts. For example, here we can see this is very, very clean, whereas you get sometimes a little bit of graininess on the Mini 2. Not by a lot, and you can actually fiddle around with the settings and use Smooth to get rid of this, but I wanted to keep these both exactly as they are without changing any settings on the scanner other than putting them to basically do the same. However, I will say there is a massive, massive benefit to the infrared scanner, and that is that as opposed to the blue light where you shouldn't be scanning in someone's eyes, with Miraco you can scan someone from head to toe, including their face, with their eyes open, which obviously has massive advantages. Now with that flip screen, let's see if this is actually really possible. So I thought I'd try scanning myself here, and it's definitely not the easiest thing to do to move your arms around without actually moving your face. And I guess I'm gonna have a little bit of issue with my eyes because obviously you need to keep looking at the screen and that's gonna change where your pupil is, which is black, and most 3D scanners don't do a great job with black objects. But actually, because the screen is at six inches, it's pretty large, this does make this very comfortable to do yourself. Though obviously you're only getting the front of your face, not the back, though if you're wanting this extra detail, I imagine that's all you're really interested in. Now I just wanted to really quickly show you that you can do all the things that you normally would be able to do on the desktop version of this. For example, I'm gonna fill in the small holes and the scan of this face. For example, you can see some around the eyes, and this will do all the processing on the Miraco itself, without you having to involve a computer at all. Finally, wanting to test the other end of this scanner's capabilities and scan something larger, I enlisted the help of Sky here. Now I've scanned Sky before with the range two, so it was quite interesting to do a comparison to this. I will say using Revo Point's human-sized turntable did make this vastly easier, so there is a little bit of bias in this comparison there. And if you do want to scan anything that's larger, especially a person, this turntable really does make it a much easier process. Now Sky has some darker surfaces, including this scarf which I've put on, which should make this a bit more challenging, but you can see that the Miraco handles this very easily, which is great to see, and it's capturing all the details such as the fur. Now the range two for scanning larger objects does capture slightly more per frame. It's got a bigger scanning window or it will scan more in one go, which normally is really good for helping with tracking. But we can see here the Miraco has no issues with tracking at all. It doesn't even stutter when scanning this, including these darker surfaces. So if you're ever gonna to want to scan something smaller, having this versatility is really nice. What this can also do, which is very impressive, is that you can scan in this far mode 
and then you can pause the scan, change to near mode, and then scan maybe some smaller objects on your overall large object, and you'll get that higher level of detail, and then go back to scanning the rest of it. An absolutely amazing feature, and something that I never thought you'd be able to really do with 3D scanners. Having seen the other results in this video so far, I'm sure you're not particularly surprised to see that this has a really nice result. You can see the fur really clearly, you've got all the detailing you can want on the scarf, you've got the little folds and wrinkles, and it's easily as good a result as I got from the range too. Now I appreciate that I might not have scanned exactly the thing that you want to see that this scanner can do. You might be interested in automotive parts or something like that. To help with that, there's a link to the Revo Point Mirico Facebook group, this is a really good place to check out even if you don't have one. A lot of people will share videos and images of things that have 3D scanned using the Miraco scanner. So you're very likely to find the thing that you're interested there to give yourself a good view on if this is something you want to buy. Now speaking of buying, do I actually think the Miraco is worth purchasing? Well firstly, it is an amazing bit of kit. Firmly deserving the Red Dot Award that it recently won. There's no other scanner that I can think of out there like it, but that begs the question, is there a reason for that? Do we really need a scanner like this? If I really want to scan large objects and small objects, I could just buy a scanner for each of those individual tasks. Why buy one scanner that can do both? Isn't that just over-engineering? And over-engineering is expensive. And let's be clear, the Miraco scanner is not a cheap piece of kit. This is the price at the time of recording, though I will say there's a sale that should be starting today, the 29th, and there is a discount code in the description which will give you a further couple of percent off of that, giving a total of a 10% discount. But if your sole purpose is scanning miniatures or small objects, then no, it's probably not going to be worth getting the Miraco. Just go ahead and get the Mini 2 with its blue light scanner and save yourself about $500. Or if you want to scan large objects, get yourself a range too. That costs about $800 before you get involved in any sales like the one that's starting now. But I think this price comparison section really shows what the Miraco is all about. If you want to scan both large and small objects, you're going to be saving yourself nearly $300 by buying yourself the Miraco. And with that, you're getting the ability to see everything on screen. You don't need to be attached to a phone or a computer. You can process on the device itself and you only have to carry around one device with you. I don't know how this is actually cheaper than buying each of the individual devices, but somehow Revo Point have done it. I'm not saying that this is a cheap scanner. It is definitely not. But the ability to buy one scanner that does the job of two and does it with additional features as well, I think is absolutely brilliant. So well done Revo Point, and I really hope that they keep coming up with these innovative solutions to 3D scanning problems. And if you are interested in any of these products, there's links in the description to all of them. There are affiliate links, which means they cost you no extra, but help support the channel to keep bringing you reviews and other content such as 3D design in Blender and reviewing other products to make your 3D design journey easier. Have a great day, guys.